Hello everyone, my name is Plasma Muffin, and welcome back to Cube World. This is episode 4 in my Cube World playthrough slash tutorial series. And in this episode, I am going to be doing a dungeon finally. So, first off, uh, I had a lot of trouble with the sound, trying to get the sound to work, and possibly as a result, whoops, possibly as a result, I uh, was going to be... You can hear my computer fan in the background, because I did get a new computer, and the fan is really loud, but, um, that's, uh, hopefully that's not going to be too big of a problem. So, let's talk to this guy real quick. I'm saving money to buy a hang glider. I want to kill this bee as well. Funnily enough, the bumblebees are actually hostile, while the, uh, the hornets are non-hostile. They only attack if you attack them, which is kind of backwards. But it's how the game was made. Alright, so to prepare for this dungeon, I have done quite a few things. I have uh, crafted 50 life potions. I also have 50 water flasks, and I should have... Where is that? Oh, it doesn't show up in crafting, right. And yes, I also have 50 glass flasks and 50 heart flowers, so I can... What? What are you doing? I guess that's a treadmill now, that's cool. Uh, can I make anything right now? I can make... some stuff, but I'm not going to. So, let's find this dungeon. Curtain Tree. If you look here on the map, that's a dungeon. They show up with their names. If it isn't a city, it's a dungeon. I'm pretty sure that's the only uh, the only other things. T this one, this valley, technically it, that's a dungeon too, even though it's not a dungeon, it's a valley. Same with the tree. Also, the uh, little cross swords there, that means that's a mission. Missions are little quests where um, you have a specific goal, and if you complete them, then you will get platinum coins, which can be used for, uh, is it reforging? It might be called that. Basically, you change the power level of a weapon. So if you have, like, a, a, uh, dagger that's plus one, so for level one, but you're, like, level 30 and you want to use it, you can upgrade it with platinum coins. However, you can only do it once, and it's usually pretty expensive, so... It really isn't viable most of the time, because the way the coins work in this game is just, it's not very well balanced, being unfinished. Oh, look at that! That's cool! Who are those dudes? Are they bad dudes? No, that sucks. That guy's called Derek, and he's an undead. Oh, no, he's a human. I thought they were undead for some reason. Look at the chat. Hello! I have a new pet. It's a slime. I love it. Corgats. You are strange looking. H how? You have teal hair. How am I the strange looking one? Whatever. You know, I wonder why ninja armor and assassin armor, like rogue armor, I wonder why it's not black. You'd think it'd be black, because, you know, ninjas. But it's not. It's brown. Sometimes yellow. So I'm using my daggers now, and what that means is I attack- I do less damage, but I attack faster, and my special attacks poison enemies, although they don't stun them as much. Which is a bit of a shame, hopefully you can hear me over the violence. Also, these things are called biters, and they punch you. Which makes sense somehow. Kind of ironic. I am going to eat some pineapple slices. So, as you can see, I have full armor. I did not have that in the last episode. I don't think so. I have everything equipped except the special slot. That's because the special slot is reserved for things like uh, hang gliders and boats. Specifically just those. There's nothing else you can put there. And they are used to hang glide and to boat. Boating is a verb, right? Yeah. Just 
pick on the local wildlife for fun and profit here. We're almost to the tree. Take a look at that, isn't that cool? Things like this make me appreciate having a computer that can run Cube World on a high render distance. Because if you have a weaker computer, it could be kind of graphics intensive. Fortunately, I can run it quite well. As you can see, I get combo really fast with my daggers, but um, I think it takes it longer for the uh, combo to be as effective. So, like, since I attack fast, my combo goes up higher, but it needs higher levels to be as effective as lower levels of combo with slower weapons. He's gonna see me while I'm eating, isn't he? Oh, he's not. That's cool. Yeah, eating is... it takes a while, but we are going to be getting... Actually, we already have better food that we can use, I'm just not using it because I want to use up all my pineapples. Pineapple slices. Oh yeah, I, uh, I forgot to name my sheep Cotton because that is a non-generic name. Speaking of which, there's some right there. Defeat the ruler at the Curtain Tree. That is... That thing at the right, that only shows up for quests or missions. Oh, I have yellow jelly, so if I find a yellow slime, I can tame it. Excellent. So far, we got pink, blue, and green. So these dungeons will often have... Oh, oh, out oh, loud. I'm gonna not talk when I attack those guys, because that is loud. And I want to make sure you can hear me. Um... So, dungeons often have enemies that are not found anywhere else, or are not at, le at least not found in this area. So, like, slimes, they're only found in dungeons outside. So, that's cool. And if I'm lucky, I'll find a yellow one. That is the boss. I don't know why he's not at the top of the tree. Usually they are, but sometimes it messes up and puts him on the side. That's okay. Just make it easier to climb up to him. Now, the, um, the difficulty of a dungeon is shown by the color of the name. It's blue, which means it is roughly my level. So, there's four tiers of dungeons. White, which means that's that dungeon is weaker than you. You should be able to steamroll it with ease. Blue, which means it's your level, so it should be a decent challenge, but not too hard. Uh, orange means it's more... I am over here, sir. Orange means it's more powerful than you, and it's going to be hard, and red means it's way more powerful than you, and it's going to be very hard. This is a vampire. They are all rogues. As you can see, it looks like this guy's a ninja, because when he does a special attack, he doesn't uh, turn invincible. So yeah, enemies can have class specializations as well, although they don't use skills. Like, this guy's a ninja, but he can't use shuriken throw, or sneak, or intercept. Well, he can use intercept, actually. Take that back. They can use low-level class abilities, but they won't use high-level ones. Also, I kind of just spoiled what the next upgrade is, but that's okay. It's it's shuriken attack. You perform a backflip to seek shelter and throw multiple shurikens at your enemies. Oh yeah, I forgot. Off camera, when I was collecting resources, I actually leveled up. So I'm going to bump up sneak a bit, and now I only need two more levels before I can get that. So that's cool. I have one Ginz... I can speak English. I have one Ginzang soup. I don't know where I got it or why I only have one, but okay. So now we're going to have to climb this tree. I really like the way the climbing works in Cube World because it's sort of like in real life. You can only climb a short distance and then you have to find a handhold, right? That's kind of what it's like here. You have so much energy and and uh, when you run out of energy, you have to, you have to find another handhold before you run out of energy so you can keep climbing. 
It's really cool, really satisfying, and I like it a lot. So here we are at the top of the tree. The boss should be here, but he's slacking off downstairs. Also, there's this guy. He's the boss's henchman, his lackey. Dropped a crossbow, which we can't use. Alright, let's trigger this boss and get down on some stable ground, because I don't want to fight him up here. If you're next to a wall and you're dropping down and you hold any tap control every now and then, that'll slow your fall. You grab onto the wall every now and then, that slows your fall. Okay, so these bosses, the bosses that are found outside are actually a lot more... They're a lot stronger, or they have a lot more health than the bosses found indoors. Which is a bit of a problem. Because it's gonna take a while to kill this guy. And I might not have enough potions. Oh, no, we're dead in his health. He's also spawning weak clones of himself. He's a warrior, which means he's going to drop warrior gear, which sucks for us because... I'm not a warrior. Morkara. Undead. Doing a pretty good job, but still got a significant amount of health left. Should probably potion up soon. Let's do that now while he's stunned. I'm gonna lose my combo, but that's okay. I'm not gonna be able to keep that up anyway. And if I die, I will also lose my combo, and he will heal up. I do not want that to happen. So, boss fights in this game are pretty basic. There's some bosses that are special, like Liches, or Cyclops, things like that. And they are a bit stronger and have more unique... Uh, more unique abilities. Also, I'm pushing him away from the tree, because, uh... That way, I, um... That way, I, um, don't have to contend with his buddies if they respawn. Enemies respawn after five minutes. All enemies. So... Oh, the mission is back. You'll notice I'm trying to time my attacks, to, or my special attacks, to when he does his, uh, when he does his, when he tries to hit, hit me with the sword, because the shield doesn't do that much damage, but the sword does. Gonna have to heal up again. 265 hits, that's a lot of hits. So yeah, you'll notice I can move while drinking potions. That is the reason you want potions, because in a boss fight, you're going to need to run away. If you hold still while eating, then you're just going to lose more health than you get, unless the enemy is significantly weaker than you, in which case you probably won't need to heal in the middle of a fight anyway. So yeah, you definitely want potions, but the fact that you can only carry 50 of each of the ingredients and the potions themselves makes it so it's uh, it can be the problem. This is kind of like a Slayer boss in Skyblock, except it takes longer to kill. Just hacking away at him. I'm using the daggers because I want to poison him. And they do a good job of that. Poison adds up some extra damage, which I think will help a lot. Well, okay, maybe it's not helping a huge ton, but it is definitely helping. It's almost half down. These bosses... These boss fights can get kind of long sometimes. Which is a bit annoying, but oh well. It's mostly the outdoor ones. But I want to do this one because it's got a... 
quest or a mission associated with it, and I want those platinum coins. <laughs> He does that he's charging up a special attack. If you use your special attack on him, then you'll just stun him and prevent him from doing that. Yeah, sometimes they dodge, and if you try and hit them while they're dodging, you'll lose your combo. Same with... well, sometimes it happens if they're blocking. Not always, though. Yeah, that attack takes so long to charge up that I can almost always stun him before he, uh manages to pull it off. Stronger enemies, however, are harder to stun. The more mana you have when you use your special attack, the more likely you are to stun an enemy with it. But uh, the chance also decreases the stronger the enemy is. So you might be able to stun one enemy, a weak enemy, with a half charge special attack. But, uh... You'll need a fully charged special attack for a stronger enemy or a boss or something like that. Yeah, those clones of himself he keeps summoning are pretty squishy. Fortunately. Heal up. Did I interrupt? I interrupted my healing, didn't I? Oh well. I doubt it'll make that much of a difference. Maybe one potion. Possibly two, but I doubt it. You want to be careful not to die, because... What? He just cancelled his own attack to do a different one. Big brain. How does he see through all that hair? He doesn't... He's undead, so he doesn't even have eyes. And he's also got all that hair that he can't possibly see through, even if he did have eyes, so like, how is he seeing me? Probably magic. Well, actually, undead do have eyes, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, actually, I think they do. I guess they do. Still, that hair. probably be abusing that whole, yeah, this thing where you get constant crits if uh, you dodge an attack by performing a special attack, or just by dodging, you know, because that'll make this fight go a lot faster. Need to heal up. Yeah, there's not really much to say here, but, uh... Unfortunately, attacks don't cost stamina, just dodging. Man, that would suck if attacks cost stamina. It kind of works in Dark Souls, but it would not work here. It, actually, the gameplay of this game is quite a lot like Dark Souls, but a lot more forgiving, and the controls are infinitely better. Because you play with a keyboard and mouse instead of a controller. If you know when exactly to dodge, then you can do that a lot more efficiently by just spam dodging. There we go. I timed that properly for once. I really like the sound you get when you get a critical. Just, it's so satisfying. I think he's trying to do an explosion there. Sometimes they do that. It's 
seems like a likely... likely thing. Almost got him. It would suck if I died right now. Almost got him. He's almost dead. There we go. All right. 68 XP. Whew. That was a hard fight, but we won. We prevailed in the end. All right. So what we got from that is we got... Uh, five platinum coin. That is terrible, actually. Normally you get like 20 at least. Scratch, scratched iron fist. Ooh, I can use that. You know what? Let's go ahead and equip that. It's actually going to be better than a common iron fist. Yeah, it's actually an upgrade toward daggers. All right, there we go. So now we have some iron fists that buffs our weapon rating up a bit. Neat iron gloves can't use that because we're not warriors. We, I am not a warrior. I don't know why YouTubers say we so much. Anyway, so this is what you can do. This is the exact same attack set you would see if you didn't have any weapons equipped at all, but it does more damage. So you can punch things, which is real fun. So I also got an Ice Spirit, plus 10. Hmm, excuse me. And what that does is it... I can... Apply that to a weapon that's either one tier above it in power level, one tier below it, or exactly the same, and it will apply the effects. It's kind of like enchantments from Minecraft, or any other game with enchantments, really. It basically just uh, it affects the item in a certain way. For example, Ice Spirits will... Sometimes special attacks will freeze enemies. Basically, your spirits... I haven't really gotten into weapon uh, customization. Oh, that was fun. A little roundhouse kick there. I haven't really gotten into weapon customization, but you can customize weapons. Make them... Hold on. You'll notice I can't really stun that guy with these fists, because... They're really fast, but individually they don't do much damage, they don't have much power, so uh, it's harder to stun enemies, but you get combo really fast. And that's actually a thing with spirits, is if you use a spirit on a on an item, then uh, the way you activate the spirit is by getting a high combo, and the higher the combo, the stronger the effect will be. Hello Hornet, you are proving my point nicely that I made earlier in the episode. And... Um, so, the, uh, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So, the higher your, uh, combo level is, the more hits you get in a row without missing or stopping for too long, the stronger your spirit effect will be. Ice spirits slow enemies down. Sometimes they freeze enemies. Wind spirits make you move faster. Uh, fire spirits just deal extra damage but it's mostly, it's pretty negligible. They're not that useful. Um, what else? Uh, there's a couple other spirits. Unholy spirits give you lifesteal, but you need a really high combo to get any, and even then you get like 0.2 of a health point per hit. So it's it's really, it, you, it, it might as well... It might as well not even be there. It's, it's effect, it could be a placebo effect, and we would have no idea. They should probably buff that. Is that a freaking terrier boss? It's a Scottish terrier boss. Okay, well, uh, looks like our field trip is going to take a little detour. So sometimes you will see random bosses just wandering around in the world. They will be ordinary characters, ordinary enemies, sometimes even things that are normally friendly. But they will be bosses, and they will be aggressive. And uh, they always appear outdoors. You'll never find them in towns, or dungeons, or underground. I haven't really gone underground, I don't think. Not much. But, yeah, so... This is a Scottish Terrier. I feel kind of bad fighting a dog, but... 
he's an evil boss dog. So I don't feel too bad about it. Okay, I managed to stun him there, that's good. Sometimes they do that little spin attack. As you can see, I'm doing like no damage to him each individual hit, but my special attacks and stuff and my crits end up dealing a lot of damage. So, so fists are really good for things with like high defense because you can get a higher combo, and combo is helpful for things with high defense. So there is some strategy when it comes to choosing your weapons. My ears. There's some strategy when it comes to choosing your weapons and your gear and your attack speed and stuff. Attack styles. Uh, fight styles. Combat combat styles and strategies and things. So, uh, by the way, when I level up my sneak, it uh, increases my sneaking speed and my stealth ability, which is uh, how easy it is for me to stay hidden. If I have level 1 sneak, then just moving a tiny bit in a dark area will lower my stealth by a fair amount. But if I have like level 100 sneak, then I can run around and it'll only deplete a little bit even in the daytime. I don't actually know. I've never gotten to level 100 sneak. I've only made it up to like 30 or so. I usually get bored of playing one character after a while and I'll just switch to, I'll just start a new game. Some people just play the game through until they have insane amounts of stuff. I am not one of those people. I should get away from all these other dudes because I don't want an entire herd of Skullbulls attacking me. I'm inside him. I might not be able to kill them fast, but I can kill them consistently, and that's the most important thing. Why are they taking a bath, anyway? Come here, you. Just one, mind you. I only want one. Weird, he didn't notice me till I moved. That's kind of odd. Let's turn on the lamp. He is not coming out of the water. He's a water buffalo! I am very clever. By the way, Wind Spirits will increase your attack speed as well as your, uh, as well as your movement speed. So they can actually be good for, like, fist weapons and things. Let's fight in the water, that'll be fun. That was a waste of an ability. If you tap the T key in a fight, then your pet will actually regenerate slowly. The reason that works is because um, T takes your pet out of combat and pets only regenerate health out of combat. So, um, but then they go right back into combat the next time you hit an enemy. So that's why the regen is slower is because it keeps turning off and on again. The reason I dodge every now and then when I don't need to is because uh, when you attack, then you do this battle animation, and uh, dodging cancels it. You don't have to dodge roll. T oh, Rock of Ikoron. Yeah, okay, so that is a dungeon that is way beyond our power right now. It's red, that means it is very high level, and I should not mess with that. Oh, the <laughs> you're friendly, cool. 
You can use better bombs when you become stronger. Yetis are really strong. Alright, cool. Now, another thing is that some dungeons will actually have... Uh... Going west, gotta remember. Some dungeons will actually have a plus, like catacombs of Ikoron plus four. There's plus one, plus two, plus three, and plus four. What that does is each plus. Uh, hold on, this is gonna get loud. Hold that thought. I just realized I told myself to hold that thought. So, um, let's say you have a plus one ruin, or dungeon of some sort. That means that the enemies there will be a little bit stronger. Now, if you have a white name plus one, it's still white name, but it's, the plus one just adds on a little bit to its existing strength, and, um, dungeons with plus... So the color determines the level, and the plus determines the gear, I guess, of the enemies in the area. So they will be stronger. It's so like a plus for white name dungeon might actually be harder than a plus zero uh, red name dungeon or orange name dungeon. But you can actually... Um, each plus as a level of rarity to the items you will get from enemies in that area. So if you find a plus area that you can actually be beat, it's a good idea to actually farm there, because you will get higher rarities of items, like these things. These are common items. They're white name. Co white name is common. Uncommon is uh, blue. No, green. Uncommon is green. Rare is blue. And... Um, legendary is purple. No, epic is purple, and then legendary is yellow. So, and then there's mythic, which is red, but those are incredibly rare. Mythic, or mythical items. And, so I have like a common iron fist and a scratched iron fist. Those are prefixes. The prefix determines exactly how powerful something is, so two items of the same rarity with the same prefix will have exactly the same stats. And I've actually made my way to a new land. The lands of Varmi. How long have I been recording? Oh goodness. Alright, well this seems like a good place to end off. We just found a new land. It is a desert. The lands of Varmi. Desert of Varmi, I guess. And deserts have all sorts of cool new things. Uh, like orcs, which are entirely indigenous to deserts. You can never find them anywhere else. Uh, that's sarcasm. Copper coins look like pancakes. That's funny. Um, so yeah. Uh, I'm going to explore this new place. That's why I was going in a straight line, is because I wanted to leave the biome, and this was the fastest route. So, you can see the they're called landscapes, but basically there are these huge areas where this this all is grassland. So it's going to have trees and grass and hills and stuff like that. This is all desert. It's just going to have desert. It's going to have sand. And each landscape has a unique uh, town, one town. There's no little villages or anything. Uh, by the way, all missions will reset at a certain time at night. So each day in the game there will be a new mission, and so if you don't complete a mission fast enough, then it will disappear. I'm I don't know if that can happen, like if you are in the middle of fighting the mission boss and the, the time ticks over, I don't know if that will actually change the mission. Um, but I will explore deserts tomorrow, talk about all the fun stuff you can find here. This is great. I, w I was hoping that we wouldn't get an ocean, and we did not. So, I think I'm going to explore the desert a bit off camera, get close to the city, because I don't want to do too much walking, and I can buy stuff, upgrade my gear, and all the fun stuff that there is to do. But for now, I'm just going to go to bed, and actually, I'm going to do this, because that's fun. If you do this, that just makes you stand up, 
so you can sleep standing up, so that's fun. Actually, no, you're technically not sleeping. I mean, yeah, I, do I look asleep to you? This looks really cool, though. I love doing this. I love doing this. This is so much fun. Anyway, so that's it for this episode of Cube World, and thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Sorry for the long absence. The reason for that was because I, cause I got my, my new computer, and I had to get that all working put together before I could get the recording done. So, that's it for now. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Bye.